Hello and welcome to my first Super Smash Brothers video. I apologize in advance for kind of low production quality this may have. I'm making things up as I'm going, so I don't exactly know how this is going to turn out. Without further ado, let's boot up the game. So we're working all right. Hyrule because it has a nice wall. <laughs> you immediately see there's some serious issues graphically, but for what I've seen anyway, it doesn't carry over into any emulation inaccuracy that's going to bother us. Just confirm. Control it further away from the mic. The world glitches happen. So the first thing I want to do is zero in on Mario's position variables in the code. So that, at least for Super Mario 64, that was a good jumping in point to kind of jump in and start figuring things out. The process. And let's start searching. So I'm going to assume that the scale is similar to Super Mario 64, and so we're looking for something maybe in the thousands. And also the position variable serves as a float as in Super Mario 64. So we'll search. I need a lot. It's a lot. Uh, but because we're looking for a specific variable, even though we don't know the exact value, we know something about its behavior. For instance, it's probably just increased. So we can go in here, look for increase. It's a pretty good job. Cut off some orders of magnitude there. Let's jump down, look for a decrease. There's still a bunch of things that are changing, so let's do another same as before. All right, down to 42. And there are still a bunch that don't look great. Let's run over here a little bit. Hopefully the floor is flat. Do another same as before. All right, we're down to five. I think it's not this one. Uh, but right now we have four different candidates that are giving the same value. So it seems likely that Mario's height is actually 1022. So this is interesting. We're seeing, look at the top and bottom are the same value, but the middle two are different. This one doesn't seem to change when I jump, except when I landed on this platform. So it seems likely this is the height of the last platform that Mario was on. This other one I'm not too sure about. It's increasing a little bit when Mario's in the air. Uh, probably has something to do with game logic ideas that I'm just not familiar with. But it seems very likely that one of these other two is Mario's height. I'm not too worried about the fact that there are two variables that seem to be behaving the same way. That was rude. A lot of times things will be repeated. For instance, in Mario 64, there's a Mario object, which is very much like the other objects, as well as a specific Mario data struct. No, oh, no? OK. Kirby survived. All right, so the next step is to figure out what this means in the Nintendo 64's world. Because this is a memory address for the emulator. So the emulator has its own memory, and then it has something that's like a copy of the N64 memory after the memory mapping happens. The 
offset between the two should be the same per emulator, so I already know what it is, but just, just for fun, let's find it. So we're looking for a float whose value is 1939. Unfortunately, we also may find this one. Actually, for solve that, let's jump in the air. Okay. Oh wow, now we have two different values. So actually, we've confirmed that these two are different somehow. Maybe previous frame, current frame? I don't know yet. Actually, let's test the hypothesis. It looks like this one's always higher than this one, so this may be the last frame position. So, right now, well, it could also be, I don't know, there's a lot of options. This is the sort of thing, I'm trying to guess at how this game is designed, how it's storing this information. But right now, let's just look for this value. Right now, the problem is when we search in an EMU, we're looking for hex data. So we need to figure out what this is in hex. There we go. 44DIF98C. And hey, look, there's just one. That was easy. Um, so we can see this is a 262F94 instead of 10282F94. So the conversion is pretty easy. We just subtracted two from the space. So let's look a little bit at the memory around this region. From experience, this is likely a pointer to somewhere else in memory. This is another pointer. And these two are floats. This one's negative and this one's positive. You can tell by the first bit, the highest bit. So to test another hypothesis, let's run around a little bit. I'm going to keep hitting refresh. You can see as I run side to side, this value is changing. And in particular, it switches from negative to positive here. So it seems like this is the zero of the x-coordinated stage. And obviously it increases to the right. So we still have a problem of figuring out which of the two, I like the music running, which of the two variables is the height that we care about. And so one way to test that is to see if we change one, if it actually changes Mario's height. So let's try this out. I'm going to jump. I'm going to set a right breakpoint on, let's do the X position just for fun. OK. So now the game stopped again. This command is about to modify Mario's X position. Didn't actually change it there. but. Let's try flipping it to positive. Step through a few more times, see if anything else changes, change it back. I think we're in the clear. Oh, whoa. Something happened there. Aha. So this one got changed back. So it might be that this first variable is not the variable controlling Mario's height, but rather another one derived from it. So let's try the other one. It should be at 2e9 fe8. Okay, and again, let's jump back a little bit. This is our candid X position. So let's try our experiment again. Oh, whoops, hold on. Let's unset the other one. So let's try the same trick. Set the X position positive. Oh, and all of a sudden, Mario moved off screen. So, yeah, that's a pretty good piece of evidence that, one, this is the position variable that controls where Mario is. And two, 
the vector is stored, well, we don't know about the third component. It looks like maybe it's a Z component and it's not used. We can play around with that in a second. But it seems like this is the address of Mario's position vector this time. 2E9, FE4. So let's record that. All right, pretty good progress. So just for fun, let's check out if that Z coordinate is actually doing anything. Let the game go again so Mario can be back on screen. Let's put in a nice value. So you can see the game doesn't like that, immediately tries to set it back. Let's set it to a slightly bigger value, see if we can notice any change. And in fact it worked. Let's try to pause. We have successfully moved Mario off the stage. It's pretty neat. Interestingly, he's moved back. So this is... Maybe this was serendipitous. Let's find out. If anything interesting is happening. And in fact... We can immediately see that what's happening with the roll glitch is the Zeke <laughs> coordinate moving. So maybe the series will be a little bit shorter. Uh, this may be a good place to end. So we figured out the mechanism of the rolling glitch, but not necessarily why it happens or what oversight led to this. It's not obvious that there should be any reason that the Z coordinate is changing. This gives us also a good jumping in point for next time we can look where this variable is being changed to a non-zero value when it rolls, when Mario rolls. So one way to filter for this, game on pause maybe, we can look at the places, the lines of code that modify this variable. And record them all. Here's one, here's another in the same function, or close by anyway. And we seem to have a loop. So we have some modification to the z-coordinate. And right now they seem to be mostly decreasing, not entirely, Mario's z-coordinate back to zero. Now that we have these normal modifications, let's try doing our roll. A little bit annoying, because pausing several times per frame. Okay, we're starting a roll. Let's be on the lookout for any new addresses. So far, so good. So far, so good. Nothing new to report. Here we go. Ooh. This is new. This is just something's happening with the exception handler. So I may actually be in over my head with this one. We get to look at the stack trace of this. So it does seem like one of these variables is increasing the Z offset. One of these lines of code, I mean, is increasing the Z offset. Aha, okay. So specifically this last value increased the Z offset. This could bear culprit. 
notes to help me remember for next time. Let's figure out what function we're in. Looks like 18F7C. Uh, so I dumped the code before for the game. Just everything in RAM, basically, more than we're going to need. I can grab this code. Now, uh, probably the context, which it's called, is going to matter a lot as well. But for now, to sum up, somehow the roll glitch is causing an accumulation in the Z offset, which most of the time is zero on the normal play. There's some sort of behavior that moves the character back into the zero plane. Something's not quite right, and it may be happening in this function. Next time, we'll dive in a little bit further.